Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. Is most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hepner, and today is March 19th, 2016 and one of the biggest weather events that we've seen this year so far across South Central. In just a moment we'll be on to your aviation, marine and public forecast, but when we're not here you can always check our information out online by going to www.arh.noaa.gov or you can simply call our 1-800 information line at 1-800-472-0391. And as always, if you're on the internet, be sure to check out our information on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Now on to the uh, topics of the day that were of interest. We had a snow event earlier across the southern areas of the state with uh, snow totals that were quite impressive from Eagle, uh, four inches of snow down to Glen Allen, which had a reported a foot of snow earlier today. Valdez had two feet of snow over to Paxson. We had 12 to 18 inches from over there from Glen Allen and west towards the mountains along the Talkeetnas. Now taking a look at what we have out there currently, the lower, the upper Tiananmen Valley has now been canceled for the winter storm warning. Elsewhere across the state, the yellow areas are the winter weather advisories for snow, um, including much of the north and central areas of the state down to the Susitna Valley. The Susitna Valley will be the first one to expire at 10 p.m. and the rest will expire later in the day on Sunday and now across the Alaska range here we do have a winter storm warning as well as to the north in these areas they're expecting uh, snow between three to six inches tonight into the early hours on Sunday with blowing snowfall as an issue as you head to the north a little bit higher snow totals up there between eight and ten inches blowing snow will reduce visibilities down to one mile or less at times so beware that all across these areas travel hazards are going to be increased as you head through your uh, night and on into Sunday. So stay, um, make sure that you go out early and be prepared for travel conditions with very heavy snow, reducing visibility at times and also causing problems out there on the road systems. Now looking at the weather system that's currently bringing uh, this snow system, you can see there's a large swath of um, milky white color here on the infrared satellite. This is spinning up from this low pressure system that's out here in the North Pacific, the center, just well south of the Gulf of Alaska. Meanwhile, there are some clouds that are moving across the southeast. However, benign uh, conditions exist across the southeast and for the southwest as well um, into the Alaska Peninsula. Some low clouds hanging out there on the north and northwestern areas of the state, but primarily uh, we have some, you know, a stream of clouds coming from the central areas of the Aleutians north towards the Kamchatka area. So the main focus today was along this low pressure system here at the surface in 993 millibar low. So not a very strong or impressive low, but this has brought a warm front all the way up into the central interior of the state. And with this warm air, it's kind of overrunning the colder air, bringing some very heavy snow amounts this morning across the Copper River Basin. And then uh, through the early afternoon hours across the northern areas of the Kenai Anchorage Bowl, uh, Wasilla and Palm had even seen between eight to nine inches and across the uh, town of Anchorage we did see between between four to six inches um, up to seven and a half inches reported on the east areas of town so expect the blowing uh, snow areas along this very tight gradient as low pressure lifts to the north and this ridge 
uh, holds its place across the Arctic waters, we get this tight pressure gradient. So that's what's causing the gusty winds across these interior areas and along the northwest areas of the coast. Like I said, fairly quiet across the southwestern areas and the eastern Bering today with some um, just cloudy conditions for the western areas of the Bering northwesterly flow out there between 20 to 30 miles per hour. And then we have this cold front that's dropping down towards the south. This area of uh, darker clouds indicate a very cold air mass with the warmer clouds in front of the low pressure system being a warmer system. So if for tonight, expect some rain across the Gulf waters as this low pressure begins to move north and this front will begin to slowly retrograde towards the west. So this will keep a very sharp snow line across the northern Kenai. So Kodiak Island will also see you know, a mix of snow and rain, but snow will continue across areas of the central and the north, especially up towards that eastern Brooks Range. And then as we head into your day on Sunday, this, this front will continue to move towards the west coast. Now, some lighter snow showers are expected during the late afternoon hours uh, as this front begins to wind down and the low begins to slowly weaken. We'll expect to see some continued shower activity across the Gulf and Gulf Coastal areas with a mix of rain and snow along the Prince William Sound and back towards the Kenai and across the southeast, mainly in a clear uh, time as low pressure stays off to the west. So they'll have a nice day on Sunday while the north and northwest gets into a little snow from Barrow towards Dead Horse. Expect some reduced visibilities out there as the gusty winds out of the neath out of the east and northeast start picking up and across the Bering Strait and across the eastern areas of the Bering also a tighter gradient here keeps that north flow between 20 and 35 miles per hour with possible gusts up to 40 miles per hour and then across the central Aleutians we're going to see continued um, light snow shower activity mainly as that ridge drops down through Monday however that'll start to uh, diminish across the Aleutian area except for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula as this weak low pressure stays in the vicinity of Kodiak Island and continues just at a stationary but is wind on the winding down and by the time Monday gets here maybe a flurry or two showers across the interior but mainly looking for conditions to improve for your Monday forecast. Some light shower activity and once again possible across the Gulf and Kodiak Island mix of rain and snow where the warmer conditions stay there across the Gulf. Now temperatures today were very warm across the southeast and 48 to 50 degrees up to 52 at Metlock um, over at Sitka and along the southern islands there. And then we saw temperatures in the 40s from Middleton Island, the central areas back towards uh, the western areas of the Gulf temperature stayed right around the mid 30s. Now across the interior areas we are still seeing temperatures in the single digits with temperatures across the Copper River Basin and back towards the Anchorage Bowl climbing up into the 20s early this afternoon as that warmer air mass pulls in we'll see temperatures slowly climbing. Now across the northern areas of the state they're uh, 10 below to 20 below zero zero all along the north and northwest coast with single digits across the western areas of the state. The southwest is just in the mid-teens for the most part with the Alaska Peninsula climbing up into the mid-30s out at the Pribilof Islands in the upper 20s and for the rest of the Bering we are seeing temperatures moderating right around the chain in the mid-30s. Now looking at your temperatures for tonight. They're going to continue around um, to be the coldest around the north and northwest between minus 10 to minus 20 degrees. Central areas will actually stay uh, on the warmer side in the lower teens as that warmer air mass uh, comes up through the Prince William Sound. Temperatures are going to hover right around the uh, south central areas in the mid to low 30s, uh, warmest along the coastal areas and across the southeast, mainly in the mid 30s there. And then the west coast will have the coldest temperatures across the state uh, along with the north and northwest. Now the Alaska Peninsula and Bering will mainly be in the mid 20s to upper 20s and across the western areas of the Bering expect lower 30s. 
looking at your high temperatures tomorrow, it's going to stay mostly the same across the Bering and Aleutians in the lower 30s. And then the state temperatures you can see are really going to be climbing probably into the mid 30s across the Copper River Basin back towards Talkeetna. Also seeing temperatures climb possibly into the lower 40s in these areas. And then also 40s all across the Gulf waters continue tomorrow with the warm temperatures breaking out for the southeast into the upper 40s and lower 50s. Northern areas of the state will be slightly warmer, uh, closer to zero, and then Seward Peninsula will be climbing into the single digits to the mid-teens across much of the southwest. Now, looking at your flying weather, conditions are going to be very difficult, especially across the areas of the front IFR conditions. Um, observed in the morning and all day during the western areas of Prince William Sound and then be on the lookout for the Seward Peninsula back towards much of the Bering MVFR conditions. During the afternoon uh, for your Sunday, possible improvement depending on how far west this front goes, but let's just plan on MVFR to IFR conditions to the north, MVFR across much of the Gulf until later in the day when that front really starts winding down. So morning, uh, morning improvement will be very little and possibly more widespread MVFR conditions about across the southwest depending on how far back that moisture gets. Now looking at the passes in more depth, IFR to uh, to VFR for Anatovic Pass, as well as Adigan Pass will be IFR to VFR. Looking at your Lake Clark and Merrill will be MVFR all day, and then we'll see Rainy at MVFR. Windy will be IFR. Isabel, MVFR to VFR during the afternoon. Mentasta as well, MVFR to VFR in the afternoon. Tanita will be MVFR to VFR, and we'll also see IFR at Portage, Chilkoot and White Pass should stay VFR all day. Now looking at your freezing levels, that's kind of coasting across the southern areas of the Bering back towards the southeast. And then we see the 2,000 foot height along the northern areas and western areas of the Gulf climbing to 4,000 towards the Dixon entrance. Looking at your icing for tomorrow, be concerned across the north and western areas of the Gulf with um, extreme concern across the Aleutian Range and north towards the Seward Peninsula and all areas could see um, light icing across that front tomorrow, mainly below uh, 4,000 feet until you get towards this, the eastern areas of the Gulf below 6,000 feet. Here's your jet stream. We have ridging across the Bering Strait with a very amplified pattern across the, the Gulf. And then looking at your 9,000 foot levels, here's that broad area of low pressure talking about uh, spread across the Gulf back towards the eastern areas. The Gulf change of direction with the strongest winds just to the north and east of that low pressure system. And same pattern at the 3,000 foot level, we'll see uh, very strong winds around the low pressure center and a very uniform north, west, north to northwesterly flow across all of the Aleutians. Across the northern areas of the state, also be on the lookout for this very strong jet along the coast between 40 and 50 knots. Now looking at your tur turbulence, summing it all up, all across the north, uh, we can see some widespread moderate conditions there and then we'll see light conditions across the rest of the southwest and across the eastern bearing. In just a moment, we'll be back with your marine forecast. My favorite dance is Uchshuk, and it's a puffin dance. It tells a story of a puffin flying over a village and looking down and seeing girls dancing. When I dance, I feel strong and confident and really happy. I'm most happy when I'm dancing. <laughs> Well, I've been dancing my whole life, from Western dance to native dancing. I started dancing Unangok style dancing about 12 years ago with the Atukam Tilikas Nikonga, so the Atka dancers, uh, one of the well-known Unangok dance groups. I remember seeing them when I was, I must have been like four in Akitan for the first time. And from that moment on, I knew what I wanted to do, that I wanted to be a dancer.
There are endless numbers of stories to tell in dance. In Alaska Native cultures, dancing is, is a way to tell stories. Um, you tell the stories through your hands and through the motions. You know, the opportunities are endless with the dance, and there's dances about anything, and that's an important part of dancing, Alaska Native dancing, is that anybody can make a dance, and anybody can make a dance about pretty much whatever they want, whatever's important to them. It's a privilege to be entrusted to carry on these and tell these stories. When people watch me dance, I want them to share the joy that I have from dancing and to, even if they don't understand, you know, the words of the song or anything, they'll understand the tune and the beat and the motions. And I, that's what I want them to feel. I want them to feel happy and to feel connected and to feel a part of something. I just, I, I hope that when I'm dancing, I can reach out and touch somebody, even if it's just one person, uh, letting them know who I am as an Unalach. It just means that I'm a part of something bigger than myself, you know. I, this is like the happiest I've been because I'm home, I'm an adult, <laughs> and I get to dance almost every day. So I, I'm at an amazing place in my life. <laughs> I just, you know, I want to continue preserving my culture and all cultures of Alaska. So today we are surveying doll sheep in the park. Now I see a couple ewes and lambs. Oh, they're frolicking, it's so cute. We get out the scope, we get out the optics, try to count, you know, really, you know, well, is that a, is that a ewe with kind of largish horns or is that a young male, you know? Trying to make those finer distinctions to make our data as accurate as possible. You said you only see three. I thought I, thought I saw four in there too. Specifically trying to get as best we can a sense of how many lambs there are uh, per 100 ewes is the standard measurement. Yeah, I'd probably call that a yearling, which is basically looking at kind of how's the reproductive success. My name is Michael Raffaelli. I'm a jack of all trades in the National Park Service. I'm Kaya Clotter, and today at least I'm a wildlife technician. I feel like until I get the master's, I don't know that I can quite full out say I'm a wildlife biologist. <laughs> I grew up in Palmer, Alaska. One thing I really discovered when I was living in Lower 48, which is what we call the rest of the country, <laughs> um, was that everywhere felt just like a little bit claustrophobic to me. And I've always identified as a Californian, you know, and you hear people that move here, and it's like, well, how long do you have to be here to be an Alaskan? And, and I'm, I, still, I, I say I live in Alaska, you know, I think that's the way to say it. I, I live here now, and um, that transition has been interesting. And I don't know what it would be like to go back to California. I think that's where when I talk to people, they say, oh, that's the harder transition because all of a sudden you realize everything that, that's so important. You know, for me, it's the open space that I can look out my window and see for miles and know that there's no roads and that we have these wild areas. Actually, part of the reason that this park was initially formed was that uh, people were seeing you know, the, the large numbers of sheep here, that it was really good habitat. Charles Sheldon was a, a hunter. That's what originally drew him up here to Alaska. Those sheep were being hunted not only for a couple of specimens, but people were coming in potentially decimating the population. Especially with market hunting as the area was being developed, the railroad, a lot of them were, were being killed to feed those camps. Him seeing that and saying, wait a second, we're not gonna have these sheep in the future unless we do something about it now. It was ultimately the power of his passion and he affected somebody else and that affected somebody else and that affected somebody else to ultimately create a huge national park that hundreds of thousands of people come to visit every year. I feel lucky to, to have that opportunity to go out and, and take the time to look at them even if they are just little white dots and remember what those little white dots represent. His first trip of course, you know, where we were hiking, um, 
is, is where he shot his first sheep, was on, on Cathedral Mountain. Obviously the park is much too large to effectively ground survey all of it. I mean, it's six million acres, it's just not gonna happen. So basically, you know, what they wanna do is say, okay, we're gonna look at kind of a subsample, see what that number looks like. And groups divide up hiking in groups of two or three people and walk around surveying the area that's likely sheep habitat. You know, these canyons are so steep and, and twisted that, you know, your one vantage point might be all you ever get. But with the binoculars, you know, just happen to see on the ridge line looking, oh, a couple of white dots that I probably wouldn't have noticed otherwise, and sure enough, end up being another nursery group. We're on the south part of Cathedral Mountain right now, which um, is very sheepy. There's, I mean, the steep terrain, which they like, but there's also, you know, enough vegetation that they can be feeding on that. Nothing has space anything like Alaska does. Um, and that's, to me, that's a really special feeling. And it's a little bit of a paradoxical feeling because I know that me being here enjoying it is, is one person making that space just a little bit smaller. Um, but I hope that places like Denali are able to facilitate people's interactions with wild areas in ways that aren't very destructive. The parks and the park service kind of, they're that piece that we have to keep asking ourselves, is this important to us? And, and we have to continually answer that. And it's important that every generation engages in those discussions. and welcome back to the show. We'll first take a look at your ice maps, which have not changed since yesterday. So we're looking at the ice edge to possibly grow a little bit further to the south with the north, e north um, easterly flow that we have across the Bering. However, uh, very little change is expected. And then the same across the Kinnick Arm, ice along the arm there, but however, um, elsewhere across the Cook Inlet, uh, it's ice-free at this time. Now taking a look at your marine forecast, looking at the southeast, uh, small craft advisory across most of the outer waters tomorrow with uh, winds out of the east to south direction there. And then across the inner channels, a northerly flow until you head towards the Dixon entrance with a southeasterly flow between 15 to 20 knots. Across the inner channel, seas will be three to four feet. Outer waters will see 11 to 12 feet. Now looking at your Monday forecast, change in direction more out of the east across the outer waters there between 15 to 20 knots across the inner channels, a little bit lighter wind speeds between 15 to 20 knots. Seas on that day will be three to four feet across the inner channels and eight, um, around eight feet on your Monday. And then looking at your south central areas for Sunday, a small craft across much of the area with a south Easterly flow across most of the Gulf waters. Prince William Sound, easterly flow, 30 knots. Coming down um, during the afternoon hours, northerly flow across the Cook Inlet between 20 to 30 knots there. And then seas will, across the inlet will be five to 12 feet, uh, decreasing during the afternoons as well. And eight to nine feet across Shelikoff Strait, Baranoff Islands. And then the seas will be nine to 10 feet across much of the Gulf for Sunday. Monday, a little bit lighter there across the Prince William Sound, De decreasing to 10 knots out of the east. Northerly flow staying across the Cook Inlet with a northwesterly turn across Shelikoff Strait between 20 to 30 knots. And then across the Gulf waters between 15 to 25 knots, uh, turning out of the southwest, uh, south of Kodiak Island. Now looking at your seas, two to three feet across the northern Cook Inlet, Prince William Sa Sound, and then eight to nine feet across the southern inlet, five feet across Shelikoff Strait, and seven to eight feet uh, with a little bit higher seas there across the western areas of the Gulf. Uh, and then we're looking at your Alaska Peninsula forecast for Sunday, between 20 to 25 knots across the entire area, 60, 11 foot seas on the Bering side. Southern side will see between eight to nine feet, 
Watch out for freezing spray in those locations. Monday, change of direction a little bit more northwesterly, 10 to 20 knots. Seas between 3 to 7 feet across the entire area for Monday. And then looking at your Aleutians, between 20 to 30 knots, most of the area under small craft advisories out of the north primarily. And then we'll see seas between 8 to 12 feet across the Aleutian chain. As we head into your Monday, don't expect much of a directional change and seas will hover between uh, eight to nine feet across the entire area. So basically no change for the Aleutians for Sunday and Monday, steady state conditions there. Across the eastern areas of the Bering and north, we're gonna see small craft advisories between 25 and 30 knots with seas between six to nine feet, highest seas towards the Pribilof Islands there around nine feet. As we head into your Monday forecast, same northerly flow across the area, a little bit stronger winds to the north at 35 knots. So look out for also freezing spray on both of these days with seas on Monday between six to eight feet. Looking at your forecast for the Arctic coast and northwest, we're seeing also small craft primarily with gale force across um, just north of the Kotzebue Sound, Chukchi Sea. And then we'll see a north to easterly direction hang in through your Monday forecast with a little bit stronger winds out there towards the eastern boat for sea coast. And then across the Kotzebue Sound between 20 to 30 knots. Taking a quick recap at your forecast for tonight, expect uh, precip will be on the lighter side across most of South Central with the frontal axis being situated from Kodiak Island north to the Susitna Valley and then across the central interior, blowing snow across the northern areas of the state, including the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. Look for some rainy conditions across the Gulf, some light rain there in the southeast, a mix of rain and snow across the Kenai and Kodiak Island, some northeasterly flow across much of the eastern bearing and showery conditions continuing as this cold front has pushed in. Now, as we head through your weekend, look for showers to start moving further towards the west coast with conditions becoming lighter across south central by tomorrow afternoon and also across the interior and then as we head into your monday uh, conditions will be on the improving uh, through the beginning of the week these forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing always file a flight plan before you go flying the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.